I want to take a moment and encourage you about your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And well, these are some crazy times we are living in that are going to require you and me to live by faith. So let me share with you how I've worked through it. I've had a lot of conversations over the last several weeks about fear, anxiety, children, work, retirement accounts, loss of jobs, uh, sicknesses, uh, end times. What does this mean in relationship to Jesus' return? So even my conversations have been a lot different than they normally are. Let me encourage you how God has, well, built my faith through trying times. There are three specific things that have happened in my life that have helped me understand how to better live by faith when I have bad news, negative circumstances, or even fear and anxiety surrounding me in a way that I feel like it's just crushing in on me. The first was with my wife, Monica. Many of you may know the story. In May 19, 1989, she was killed in an automobile accident. It was not part of my bucket list or my life story. I did not wake up on that day expecting any such news to come, but the news came and I had to deal with it. And so did her family and my family and all of the friends and everyone that were such a great part of her life. I'll never forget the moment though that things shifted. It was on that Friday in the evening. The wreck had happened around 10 a.m. that morning and by 6 p.m., I was sitting in my parents' house and my mom and dad had been on a trip and my mother came in the door. I was in the living room by myself and when she walked in, she had a Bible in her hand. This was her exact words. I can't explain everything that's happening, but I know God's word works. I'll never forget that moment. I couldn't explain it either. I was having questions of why, why me, what happened, where did I fail? Uh, what's going to happen to my future, and yet just one phrase, I can't explain it, but I know God's word is true. I want to encourage you with that first. I can't always explain everything that's going on around us, but I do know God's word is true, and it's hard to have faith if you don't get into the word of God. The second event that really shaped my faith was one afternoon, Robin called me on the phone and said, our daughter Sophia has gotten a bad doctor's report. Sophia at age one had broken her leg and we got the cast off and less than two days later, she broke her other leg. The doctor gave us the news that it highly was suspected to be osteogenesis imperfecto, which is brutal bone disease. Robin called me on the phone. Her faith was shaken, my faith was shaken. This was not the news we were expecting to hear about our second daughter, Sophia. But we banded together and we decided to stand in faith and we prayed together and we put our faith in what God's promises were versus what our fear was. We joined hands, we stood on the scripture and we put ourselves in agreement. The end result is Sophia is healed this day. The second lesson I learned about faith in the middle of a crisis, it pays to pray. It's easy to lose our sanity with all the news going around and with everything circling around the what ifs and the might be's and could be's and should be's. And oftentimes we forget to find another person of faith to say, agree with me. So I want to encourage you with that in this time. Find you somebody of faith that you can pray with and agree with. Share your anxiety with them, share your concerns, and then let their faith encourage your faith. It's how Robin and I got through it. We just encouraged each other. Every time we felt anxious, we would inspire the other one to believe. And the third one is this. It's with my friend Matt when he passed away at 32 years old of pancreatic cancer. Again, all of my prayers with his wife, with his friends, with his family, Matt is going to be well. It didn't turn out anything like I expected because I found myself at Matt's funeral having to say goodbye to a dear friend. My faith was shaken. I was just, God, I don't even know what's going on. I had a long conversation with God. What, why, when, how, I don't understand. And I was a little bit troubled. Does it even work? Does prayer work? Does, does faith work? And in a hotel room in Statesboro, Georgia, Here's what God spoke to my heart. 
Matt died believing, are you going to live unbelieving? In that moment of time in my life, I understood that my faith is not that it always works out to my good, but my faith is that God can work all things out for good. And I just have to keep believing. I cannot live on this planet unbelieving, claiming to be a Christian. Hey, when things don't work out well, keep believing anyway. God will work it out to your good. I want to encourage you with those three things. Number one, we can't explain everything, but God's word always works. Number two, prayer really does make a difference. Find you somebody to pray with and to stand in faith with you. And then third, are you going to live unbelieving? Saying that Jesus is Lord and King and Savior, but you live unbelieving because you're nervous and anxious and fearful. Hey, that's what I've worked out over my life. So during this time where we're all kind of in an uncertain moment and an uncertain time frame in our own lives, our businesses, our day-to-day -day activities, three things can make a difference. Number one, God's word works. Number two, I have somebody that stands with me and prays with me to bring me peace. And number three, I'm always going to live believing and not unbelieving. I'm praying for you. I put my faith with your faith. I say, hang in there, stand strong, and let's see Jesus prevail. And truly, God can work all things together for good. So let's just believe we'll see that in the future. Have a blessed weekend. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for everybody who's gonna be doing church online, that wherever you're watching and participating, the Holy Spirit is going to touch your heart and give you great faith. Have a good weekend.